about your birthday. Come close. I will. All right, that's I'm just the director is telling me that. The same guy who took five minutes to put your microphone on is uh, telling me you need to come closer. There's Audrey Gusky, who is a uh, professor of marketing at Duquesne University, uh, and we had her on at Christmas time, if you recall, talking to us about all the great toy trends. Uh, and now there are consumer trends as we move in. Some of them we already know about, but. With all of this mass marketing, with all this uh, c computer thing going on, people who own co people who are selling stuff know more about you and their potential customers and their customers than you ever think they know about. That you. is exactly right. Now, as we are reaching the millennium, mm -hmm. and we're seeing so many changes as far as how products are manufactured, how they're distributed, how consumers are buying things. It's really exciting, and you're exactly right, Fred, because manufacturers, marketers know exactly who we are, where we live, what we do. A little bit, uh, little bit spooky. But I think, as a marketer, it's advantageous for us as consumers because that way they're going to be presenting me with the exact products that I want. Some people need. get very frightened, and I'm going to reach into my pocket here, pulling out my keychain, mm -hmm. which has on my keychain my Giant Eagle Advantage card. Now they've made it they've made it so convenient you don't even have to reach into your wallet. You got that little barcode there. You hand it to the cashier and you go beep and there they go. And when you do that, they know exactly what you're buying, how many rolls of toilet exactly. paper, how many cans of dog food. They they know it, they can get a perfect mm -hmm. profile off of you. And when you applied for that card, you had to give them all of the information about you, where you live, your social security number, yep. and then when you're using your credit card, that's also giving that information to the credit card companies. And so what's happening is all these major databases are being created about you and your lifestyle and what's important to you. But then again, when a direct mailing comes in, it may be products or coupons specifically for what you want. There was on the Pittsburgh, I don't know, it was Pittsburgh, one of the Pittsburgh news groups on the internet mm -hmm. uh, a few months ago just posting after posting after posting people feeling threatened by their giant eagle advantage card because it's finding too much out about them and then one sensible guy says look I want them to know what I buy because they're going to send me coupons for stuff that I buy or give me discounts for stuff that Absolutely. I buy. Absolutely. Yeah. To me, the databases are important uh, because what it is doing is telling the manufacturers exactly what I want. I'm looking forward to the day when all products are going to be created exactly for me and my specific taste. Well, that's what you're talking about. One of the first things you say, the marketing trends mm -hmm. of the new year is one-on-one -on -one marketing. Exactly. It's sort of like ultra niche picking. It's determining specifically what we as individuals want. You, uh -huh. you know, in the past, you see mass marketing, creating a product for large numbers of people. Right. If you go into the Hallmark Card Company now, you can make a card designed specifically for your mother if it's her birthday. You can make a card... Like your birthday today. Which it is. That's thank right. you. <laughs> so hopefully if someone's known, making me a I card. I would not so have made you a card. <laughs> uh, if you want to buy Levi's jeans, your specific um, dimensions, uh, your measurements, you can get a nice Italian suit designed specifically for you, your style, your measurements for minimal cost nowadays. Um, if you want to get Sports Illustrated, yeah. they have the magazines now geared toward the, your specific sports interests, the cities that you're interested in seeing how they're doing, and so we're there already. Uh, it's getting more and more complicated, but the technology is there to give us what we want. And when you get on the web, mm -hmm. uh, every time you visit a site, that site knows you, your computer sends out, boom, this is me, yeah. they know who you are, and mm -hmm. they know, to, maybe I'll send this guy some email, maybe we'll try to do this, uh, they, it is, it's just part of what's going on with the new electronic age, more people are able to know more about you. Right. Good and bad. It's good and it's bad. I love those, the newspaper tailored to what you want to see, that the front section of the newspaper has everything that you want to see in it. Exactly. Uh, and, and so you don't have to go leafing through everything. We are limited in time. I think that's the consumer's biggest concern and gripe. We don't have enough time. If I can do my grocery shopping and on a regular basis they know what my order is and weekly they will bring it to my home, put it in my house, and that way all I have to do is punch a button and click on. They have my credit card. Is that that virtual home. shopping uh, thing? Exactly. It's no brainer. It's sort of like you put yourself on automatic pilot. You don't have to think about it. I, th I think the next one is, is uh, boy, I, I can't see this one happening. Cruise control where you think Shopping. Now, come on. It's like the Vulcan mind meld. I'm thinking I need Borax or Klondike's or whatever. It's almost like that because what's happening is a lot of the purchases we make are on a regular basis. They're very routine and very habitual. And so why should I have to go into my Giant Eagle or my Shop and Save every week and tell them what I want? Why can't they have a record of they what I They should know what I want. They should know. Either, either somehow clicking on my computer and letting them know, or as products are emptied, I scan it at home, and they automatically know that I need more Dove detergent, I need more Tide laundry detergent. So and we're saying we have a computer at home, and then as home. we throw stuff away, you scan, scan it. it. The main house computer knows, you know what, we're running low on this. Bloom to the Giant Eagle. And there it is. 
delivered to All your right, home. I'll tell you what. No you, muss, no fuss. If it's 333 PCNC, this is both scary and fascinating. 333 PCNC, Professor Audrey Guskey, Duquesne University, marketing for you. Stick with us. We'll be back. That is nice. What is that, the north side? That is the north side, I am told. Welcome back to Hansberger Live. Uh, Professor Audrey Guskey, Duquesne University. Marketing is what we're talking about. Um, the, and and uh, in the broadcast business, it's almost driven into our heads, well, the primary demographic is 25 to 54 because these are the people that buy. But the 25 to 54s yes. are getting older. The baby boomers are getting older. Mm -hmm. So how are things going to change, if at all? Things are changing drastically. I think baby boomers, have, as they've gone through the different phases of their life, have really put a new slant on how to look at things in different lifestyles. They're aging, but they're aging gracefully, and they're aging sort of like, wait a minute, I'm not ready for for being old yet. So they're still listening to Mick Jagger and the Rolling Stones, they're still wearing the jeans, they're still doing all the stuff they did yeah. pretty much as they were kids. But yet, as they're getting older, there's obviously different needs that they have. Relaxed fit jeans. Relaxed fit <laughs> jeans is probably one of them, you know, as far as uh, eyeglasses and reading and, you know, different, different physical and, and health issues are uh, being a concern. So you may notice that a lot of the manufacturers, the packaging, the letters are going to be a little bit bigger than they used to be because the majority of our population, as we particularly it's know in Pittsburgh, older. is getting older. Yes. The old marketing adage is that well, we get them 25, 54, they haven't really made the brand choices yet, which is why we target those folks because uh, we want them we want to convince them to come to buy our brand. Once you get older, you're set in your ways. You're, you're, if you're buying Coke, you're going to buy Coke. Or actually, Coke, the, the beverage companies want to get them when they're before the teenager. That's what I was going to say, even younger than that. They're even looking at, at preteens and yeah. little kids. Little kids, if you ever watch some of the commercials on Saturday morning cartoons, they're not only advertising kids' candy and toys and snacks and cereal, but they're advertising grocery products because they know the little ones are also making major decisions in that or where they're going to go on vacation. So the influence and brand loyalty tends to start very young. The reason they're really after that, that basic demographic group of 25 to 54 is that they feel they're sort of like the young, you know, we're, we're a very youth-oriented yeah. society. And so they want the glamour, the good-looking, the sexy people on TV. And so they figure the older people are going to see that and still buy it anyway, but they're over the hill. Because it'll make them feel young. It's supposed to make them feel young. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are at your birthday. All right, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you dare ask me how old I am, Fred. Oh, I, I'm about 25, 26. I'm serious. Okay, that's what I figured. Um, now, we touched on this. Is this something we really need to fear? I mean, could, could somebody get out of control on this? As far as as far as as profiling you, your uses. I mean, you and I thought it was fascinating. And the first thing that comes to my mind mm -hmm. is, uh, boy, this would be really cool. We have the home computer. The home com you scan the things that you've used before you throw them away. Right. And then the the computer says, okay, put this on the list to get it mm -hmm. at, at the grocery store. Whether you go personally or whether you email it to the grocery store and they deliver it. But then who gets that information? And it, should we be afraid that the, the information falls into the wrong hands? I would say probably not. It's almost as if every technology that's been invented, we're a little bit leery of it as, as humans. TV, people were afraid that it was going to mess up young people's brains. And then we got MTV. And then we've got computers. And, and it seems instead of, I mean, there are disadvantages to new technologies. But there are obviously major strengths. And it's really pushing our society forward. I would prefer someone to know everything they possibly could about me, to tell me what kind of car to buy or what particular vacation to take. Because it saves me time. What, kind it saves of car? Me what do you mean somebody's going to tell you what kind of car to buy? You go out there and you, you see. I, there's a real basic difference between men and women that I believe in. <laughs> that uh, I mean, the, we. Uh, I, I did a seminar once with a guy who bought a car online, and I said, "How could you buy the car online? Uh -huh. You need to sit down. Mm -hmm. You need to play with the gadgets. You need to take it for a test drive. Uh, and nobody's going to tell me what kind of car. Well, you know, this. Your profile says this is the kind of car you should have. Audrey, Audrey, Audrey. Nobody tells a man what kind of car to drive. Perhaps not. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, Fred, with our busy lifestyles, it's so much nicer for someone to at least give me, let's say, 10 options. Yep. And these are the 10 cars that are best for my lifestyle and my budget. Yeah. Technologies are great. I, it's getting like whatever. the replicator. Remember the replicator? The replicator on Star, on Star Trek. What did that do? Well, it pretty much whatever you wanted, it created for you particular types of food, seasoned to your taste, created exactly what you wanted. You know, if you want to to go somewhere else or you want to have a particular product or a different type of clothing, you know, you just think of it and there it is for you. So I, we're, we're moving in that direction. It's kind of like Bill, Great, Bill Gates' house where uh, everybody gets a badge and their preferences are on the badge, a little thing, a pin that you put on your side. And as you walk into each That's room, right. 
the badge knows what temperature you like and automatically adjust the temperature of the room, the light settings, and uh, any other ambient thing That's that exactly right. is your preference. It makes life more comfortable, it's scary. life easier. It's no, it's a little scary, but I, I, uh, <laughs> I, I would embrace that. And the cruise control thing, I don't think the cruise control thing hmm. where you, th oh, but you tied the cruise control thing into the home computer, right? Exactly. Yeah, it's the notion of we really don't have to think anymore about a lot of the purchases. They're like virtual shopping. We're out there, and it just happens. And you're, and you're saying that as we, we're going to get older, different. Different in a different fashion from the way our parents got older. Exactly. Yeah, shopping is taking on a whole new light. As we reach the millennium, I think people are paying more close attention to what's happening out there in the marketplace. And if you looked at Christmas and the internet sales and the types of products and the technologies people are buying, it was a new world out there. It really is. And I think people are more futuristic since we are in the year 2000 now. And I think that's a good thing for us. You said malls may go away. I think malls are going to disappear. They're going to be dinosaurs at some point. Yeah, even though I think the kids, the teenagers, always look for a place to hang uh, out. Uh, but we don't have the time, we don't have the energy, and we also don't enjoy shopping as much as we used to. We don't have the, the recreational shopping isn't there anymore. It's more functional. So if you can just click and have it delivered instead of the brick and mortar, the click, that, that's what people are looking for. Um, boy, and the mall owners don't want to hear that. What are we going to do with those malls when they're all empty because people are shopping on the internet? You're not telling me that you really think that someday just about all retail will be done uh, through our computers? I, I think at some point we're going to have minimal retail shoppers out there, actual stores that you can visit. We'll never lose that because people like the social affiliation. People like going out and seeing other people. And as you said, driving the car, seeing how it feels, getting excited about trying on the clothes. But you know what? They have projection systems now where if I sit at my computer and want to buy a certain dress, mm. they can project it on me so I know what it looks like. Almost similar to when you get your hair cut. You go into yes, a, a salon that, yeah. and they'll show you what you look like. So it, it's that type of thing. Or Jack Nicholas can come into your home through some hologram and you push a button and he's there showing you how to hold your club and improve your swing. So. Yes, or how you can use that club to beat on the uh, motorist who <laughs> just honked you off. Uh, that <laughs> we did a thing last week on uh, how how marketers have to push the envelope to get people to watch them. The Seven Up commercial that ABC refuses mm -hmm. to advertise, where the kid's walking down the street and it says "Make Seven and the back of his T-shirt says "Up Yours." Make Seven Up Yours, and yeah. ABC refused to um, to air that. I thought it was cute, but but the point is mm -hmm. that marketers are ha have to go further and further to get your attention. That's exactly right. Yeah, the things we're seeing nowadays you never would have dreamed to have seen a decades ago. And kids, because they're exposed to MTV and all those various really wild things, to get kids' attention, you really need to be different, off the wall, avant-garde. And so these types of ads will appeal to the kids, but unfortunately a lot of advertisers won't put it on for them. There's one where a kid burped for 30 seconds. Uh, it was a fascinating ad. I don't know how they're selling it. Ecampus.com. <laughs> Audrey, thank you for coming in. Always my pleasure. Happy friend. birthday on thank your 21st you birthday. Uh, see Audrey today. Tell her happy birthday. When we come back. No more cell phones in your cars. They're finally taking the big step in Harrisburg. We're going to hear from you on that. Hans Berger Live. Don't go away.